Hi guys, so welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. I haven't done a sit down video like this in a while, so I thought that what better way to start it again than to tell you guys the story of how I learned French and how I came to Paris. So I watched Nathaniel Drew's video about how he became fluent in French and how he kind of ended up settling down in Paris and that video really inspired me. And and actually this is why I'm making this video because I found his video so inspiring that I really wanted to share my story as well. If you haven't seen his video, I'm going to link it down below so you can check it out. I don't think that I ever really talked about how I became like fluent in French and how I really ended up in Paris um, other than just like in bits in some of my videos. So I thought that it would be a good idea to kind of like together all of the details of how I exactly came to Paris and why and how and why, <laughs> mostly why. So this is what we are going to do today. Just before we start, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you feel like doing that. And without any further ado, let's get into it. So my history with friends has actually started back in 2010 on a family trip to Paris. Actually, when I was younger, I was lucky enough to travel quite a lot around Europe with my family when I was younger. Some of you guys might know this, but I'm actually from Budapest, Hungary. And growing up in Europe, I think it's a really normal thing to do to kind of like travel to like neighboring countries. Honestly, everything is so close to each other in Europe that it was really easy for us to kind of like travel around when I was younger. If you have a car and you can pay for gas, you can pretty much go anywhere <laughs> around Europe. So in 2010, we decided with my family to visit France during the spring break. I've never been to France before, let alone Paris, so I didn't really have have any like crazy expectations about Paris. Also please mind the fact that I was 13 years old. So as a 13 years old in 2010, I really didn't have any expectations about Paris. I was just happy to travel. I think like sometimes the things that you don't have high expectations of or that you don't really know anything about end up being one of the best things in your life. Like all of the cities that I really enjoyed visiting were cities that I didn't know anything about beforehand and sometimes the cities that I had like high expectations of kind of ended up disappointing me. So I remember that it was only a five day trip and we visited mostly like the super touristy stuff like Disneyland, <laughs> Disneyland, um, Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe, Disneyland. <laughs> and for about the third day, I completely fall in love with Paris. And I remember that one day we went to the campus of Sorbonne and I just remember like being on the campus and like seeing the students go to class and pass by. And I remember telling my parents like I want to go to university here I want to study here and I want to live here and they were like yeah sure <laughs> dream on <laughs> so I decided at 13 that I would live here <laughs> so this was 11 years ago I'm so old <sighs> And even though I never had plans about learning French or even living or studying in France, a five-day trip changed everything for me. So let's get to the point of how I became fluent in French. So after coming back from Paris, I decided that I would learn French and that I would move to Paris to study. <laughs> so at this point, I was still in primary school, which meant that I had to pick a high school where I would continue my study. I don't know if other countries have this, but in Hungary we have kind of like, we have something that's called bilingual high schools. So it takes five years to finish this type of high schools. And basically in the first year, you only learn the language and you have kind of like the basic um, 
subjects like mathematics, literature, physical education. But really the main idea behind these schools is that you learn the target language of the school in your first year really well. So I remember in my first year of high school, I had like 25 French classes a week, even though it was super intense and super hard. I also had a pretty good level in French in a really short period of time, but that was only the beginning of a really hard high school experience. I think I didn't really have a hard time learning French. I learned languages pretty easily, but the reason why it was so hard is because from that point on, everything was in French. Mathematics was in French. Physics was in French. Hence the name, bilingual. Honestly, I didn't really enjoy high school that much, and by the end of my third year, I really started hating French. You enjoy doing something in the beginning and then you feel like you're kind of like forced to do it because you're obligated or you have committed yourself to it. Then I think it's easy for the thing to become like a struggle. So by the end of my third year of high school, I decided that I don't want to do anything with France and the French language anymore. I just wanted to finish high school and then I just wanted to like be free. Also please mind the fact that at this point I also started modeling. I started modeling at the age of 17. I was still in high school when I was modeling but I was kind of like homeschooled like I had like end of the year like final exams and I sometimes went to school when I was back in my country but I was mainly like traveling around Europe and Asia. I just wanted to like finish high school as soon as possible and I just wanted to travel and live my life and be free and meet new people and work and yeah I just really didn't want to do anything with French anymore and anything with friends anymore. Actually by the time I graduated from high school I had to take a C1 language certificate and after taking that exam and after graduating I was like okay bye friends bye friends language see you never again <laughs> five years later I'm still here so what happened what changed my mind so after four years of traveling around mostly in Asia I really wanted stability the thing with modeling is that I spent three months in one country and then I had to pack all of my luggage and go to a different country which probably sounds like an amazing life to some people and don't get me wrong I'm so appreciative of my modeling years and I met so many amazing people and I had really nice experiences in different countries and I wouldn't change how things happened for the world but after doing this for a couple of years I just really wanted stability I really wanted something that's certain and I just really wanted to stay in one place for more than three months. I still know people and I still have friends who live this way and work this way and travel around the world this way and I think that there is nothing wrong with it and it's totally fine, it's their choice but for me personally, I just really wanted something more stable. <laughs> I always did really good in school. I was always a really good student. So after being out of school for a couple of years, I really started learning new things. So this is how Paris comes back to the picture. I feel like I just suddenly like remembered the fact that I actually wanted to move to Paris at some point when I was younger. So I think it was in 2018 during the summer when I was back in my home country that I really started looking into studying abroad and going to university and I just had this thought of why not Paris? Why not go to study in Paris? Why not move to Paris? Also I totally forgot to mention but when I was modeling I actually spent like a couple of months in Paris for work so I did kind of leave in Paris also before that. So I already kind of like knew how things were working in Paris, but studying abroad and like enrolling to university here and applying for university here were something completely new for me. I had to learn everything from scratch. I was looking at all of the universities in this city and after looking for a couple of days, I found one course at one of the Sorbonne's website that I really liked. So I decided that I would apply for university 
when it was about time and looks like I got in. <laughs> also at this point I kind of knew that I really wanted to leave abroad. Honestly I never even considered moving back to my home country, not once to be honest, especially after visiting so many countries and meeting so many new people from different cultures. I just, I always wanted to live abroad. I never wanted to live in my home country. So so this is where the fun stuff started. I sent my application for Sorbonne from Shanghai. I remember after my job, I had to like go home and write the motivation letter and like look at like how like universities work in Paris. But after getting accepted to Sorbonne, I had to spend my whole summer looking at apartments in Paris, trying to figure out how the whole university system works in France and trying to like get ready for everything and learn about how France works. Honestly, one of the reasons why I started making videos is because when I was getting ready to move to Paris, there wasn't a lot of information about how like moving to Paris works. I think this is the reason why I started making videos about like life in Paris with a lot of help and details information because when I was moving here there wasn't a lot of help out there and most of the information was in French so I just really wanted to help people who are now trying to move here because when I was moving here nobody really helped me and I kind of had to figure out everything on my own so let's talk about learning French again so now you guys know that I learned French in high school <laughs> so I had C1 when I left high school but that was years ago so when I decided to to move to Paris after being out of school for a couple of years I had to relearn French. It wasn't really like starting from zero but I forgot a lot when I was modeling because I decided not to ever <laughs> talk in French again so I didn't use my French language skills at that point for like a couple of years. Before I moved here I started taking like private lessons with a native teacher and like look at how the grammar works and all of that fun stuff. The wonders of the French language. The grammar. So I was taking private lessons again so that I would come here prepared and ready for university. Honestly, what you learn in school and when you come here, two completely different things. Of course, we learned a lot of like useful stuff and I did have a really good level of French, but my first two months at university, so hard. <laughs> I think for me, like understanding French was always really easy, but speaking Honestly, to this point, I'm still a bit shy to talk in French. I don't know why. Even though French people tell me that I speak really well, but I'm just so... I don't know. So in that way, being at university here is really good because they force you to talk all the time. Participation and like presentations are super important in France. So to kind of just conclude this video, what does France and Paris mean to me today? So as some of you guys know, I'm currently at my second year at university here in Paris. I'm studying communication, ironically. Yeah, all of my lectures are in French and I'm doing pretty well. If I can say so myself, I'm a good student as always. After being here for two years, I would say that I'm really, I'm really comfortable in Paris. I feel really comfortable moving around and I feel quite at home here. I made some really amazing friends here and yeah, I feel... I feel at home pretty much. Honestly, I never really had any like bad experiences with friends. And yeah, I never had any like culture shocks or bad experiences with Paris. So also because of like modeling, I was always the foreigner. So I'm so used to being the foreigner. I feel the most welcomed in France because I can speak the language. I go to university here. I have friends here. Even when I had kind of like that fallout period with friends that was because I felt like I was forced to do it when I was in high school and if I feel like I'm forced to do something I will not want to do it and obviously France and especially Paris are no perfect places no place is perfect there is going to be negative sides to every single place that you live in yeah I think I made a good decision by coming here and yeah I feel I feel good here. Bah donc comme Nathalie elle a fait dans sa vidéo, bah je voulais aussi parler un peu français parce que c'est un peu l'idée euh, de cette vidéo. Donc du coup je voulais justement dire que si tu as quelqu'un qui veut venir 
étudier en France, mais si tu as peur de l'inconnu, peur d'habiter seul à l'étranger, je veux justement t'encourager un peu parce que bah c'est pas c'est pas forcément facile. Parfois c'est difficile de d'habiter seul à l'étranger, euh, loin de la famille, loin de tes parents, loin de tes amis. Mais je pense que euh, c'est une expérience qui va qui va te donner beaucoup de choses. C'est une expérience qui va te make you grow. <rire> La France n'est pas parfaite, Paris n'est pas parfait, il y a toujours des choses négatives dans chaque ville, dans chaque pays, mais je suis plutôt contente de vivre ici et de faire partie du, du monde académique de, de ce pays. Donc du coup, merci, euh, merci pour la France, pour m'accueillir, même s'il y a toujours des choses qui m'énervent un peu. Je pense que j'ai beaucoup appris ici, surtout d'être patiente. So I think that this is the end of this video, thank you so much for watching again. Just again, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you enjoyed it and i will see you guys very soon <laughs>